What's up guys? If we had an opportunity to have a real discussion about the first emission equipment to go, which one would it be? That is the question. We only can choose one. And I'm gonna give you guys the first one that I would like to see go away with these trucks. I have to give a special shout out to Ken Garf here in West Valley. They did supply these trucks, so if you are in the market for a Ford Super Duty, be sure to ask for Ken. And for the Ram side, you gotta ask for Josh. The numbers are right here below. Let's go ahead and discuss all the emission equipment on these trucks first. Whether you buy a Ford, Ram, or GM product with a diesel engine, these systems are gonna pretty much be the same. They're gonna look different, but they're pretty much the exact same thing. So we'll start off with the EGR system because it's easier for me to show this to you. So EGR is basically exhaust gas recirculation, and that's basically what it is. It's recirculating gas fumes through the intake manifold back into the engine to be burnt off, okay? So in time, your intake manifold is gonna get filled with soot, and there's really no way to clean it, you know, like you can't just use fuel injector cleaner, things like that to get that cleaned up. On the ram side of the house, you can see the EGR system a little bit better right here. And this piping that goes all the way over to this side dumps that soot into the intake to be burned off into the engine. So this system is probably the most hated because some people have made the uh, point of basically if you were to put a, never mind, I won't talk about it, but yes, it's basically like recirculating your own fart. It's, it's the best way to put it. And it's a really bad design and I'm shocked that they haven't found a better solution for that. I had to move the trucks because there's just so much going on here at the dealership. But just to finish off, EGR does have components. So you have the EGR cooler. So you obviously have the soot that gets put back into the engine, that sucks. You obviously have to use coolant to cool that system too. So that's the EGR cooler pretty much right there. And you have the EGR valve. So basically you have multiple components that can fail on the system. That's just one system too, so funny. Now the next system is DOC. And after that you have DPF, SCR. And we'll go through each one here really quickly. Now. Obviously, the goal for the exhaust system on these trucks is to limit nitrogen oxides and then particulate matter. So that's the goal here. Does these systems actually work? That's the question. So DLC, let's start off with that. That typically sits behind the turbocharger. So that's the diesel oxidation catalyst system, okay? And the primary goal of that system, I always called it a diesel catalytic converter, but that's not really true. It's basically there to really create the amount of heat that it needs to burn particulate matter in the diesel particulate filter. So that sits right at the turbo where it's gonna be the hottest and then that creates enough heat to really get that DPF hot enough to burn off particulate matter, okay? Now that system, it does add restriction, obviously, in the exhaust system. But the DPF is probably the least favorite of them all. I would say EGR is probably number one and DPF it will probably tie <laughs> with the EGR system because DPF has quite a bit of components too because in order to get the DPF hot it needs to go into a region and DPF is diesel particulate filter so it's supposed to filter out the particulate matter. Now in order for that diesel particulate filter to get hot, you guys heard about the DLC, but you also have to use diesel fuel to get the DPF hot enough to burn off the soot to turn it into ash, okay? So basically what has to happen is your engine has to create enough heat to get that DPF to like 1,000 to 1,200 degrees. That way it can burn off any soot in there. And the bad thing about DPF is it does affect performance. Your fuel economy is going to drop anywhere between 15 to 30 percent. I've seen 30 percent before, especially for towing them. If you're towing them, it can go down to like 6 and 7 mpg. And that's what really sucks about these trucks. Uh, if you don't do a lot of highway driving and if you don't get this engine hot enough, that DPF could actually get too full to where you have to go into the dealership and have them do a manual regen. And that's probably, again, 
between EGR and DPF, that's probably the least favorite. Now, SCR is the Selective Catalyst Reduction System. So, this system, how do I say this? The DEF and the SCR kind of work hand in hand. I'm gonna read something to you guys here really quickly. SCR has become the most effective technology in getting NOx levels, which is nitrous oxides, low enough to meet the current stringent standard. The NOx problem that can't be solved in cylinder is dealt with in the exhaust after treatment system by injecting urea based diesel exhaust fluid. We finally made it to diesel exhaust fluid. If I had to guess, this is probably the least favorite system on this truck. Not only do you have a large tank here, that's the DEF tank right there. And I love how they give you a nice skip plate to go along with that too, that you have to pay for. You don't even want this system on your truck, but it's there. But yeah, the DEF system is so unreliable. I've had friends that have had issues with their DEF fluid, and then obviously it takes out the tank. They have to get a new tank, new injectors, and it's not cheap, and it's not something that's covered under the factory warranty. They had to pay out of pocket for it. So you have to be careful where you get your diesel exhaust fluid from. You can't leave it out in direct sunlight because it can crystallize and I don't know if you've ever seen diesel exhaust fluid on the ground it looks like it's bad for the environment just saying now this looks to be the SCR on the Ram trucks you guys see these lines these look to be temperature sensors I think some type of sensor I'm not sure but this looks to be like an injector line potentially here and look at all the components on this system I mean my goodness like look at how much stuff that can fail with this system and remember they were talking about putting even more components on this now their DPF is right here for the Ram trucks and I can't really show you guys anything because it's kind of hard to see but yeah there's just so many things that they've added to these trucks that could potentially Go wrong let's go check out ford so really quickly this is ford remember that your cabin chassis trucks are going to be slightly different for the emission systems but i can see them a little bit better so i want to show them to you here that looks to be your dpf system back there and then scr all your components to go along with it so yes not only do you lose so much payload reliability is down what system if we had to pick one system which system would it be it would have to be diesel exhaust fluid for me I know some of you guys might disagree but hear me out DEF is one less expense it's not an expensive one but it's one less expense also you have to keep in mind that system is not really covered under the warranty so if you have issues with your diesel exhaust fluid you're responsible if the system fails on top of that limp mode i didn't talk about limp mode limp mode is something else that we have to deal with and they have relaxed it a little bit but for the most part, if you're towing 25,000 pounds and your system fails and now it's saying, hey, you need to get this service or your truck's going to limp mode, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So the DEF system is the first one that needs to go. You get more payload capacity, you have less components that can fail. And I think that from there, it should be easy to do weight loss program in my opinion. I would say that EGR should not even be mentioned in the comment section. I wanna hear from you guys. Which one would you like to see? EGR is as simple as a tune. If you wanted to get rid of that system, that would be super duper easy to fix. I mean, right out of the gate. DPF, I don't hear a lot of people have issues with DPF unless they just don't understand diesel engines and how that system works. You have to get that thing hot. So if you're someone that tows heavy, you know, I would say 5,000 miles a year. If you don't live in the city, then you probably won't have as many issues with that system as some other people would who do live in the city and drive at low speeds and don't get the engine hot enough to burn off the soot in that filter. But I hope you guys like the video. I wanna hear from you though, like I said, which system would you like to see? Now we didn't talk about VGT, which is the variable geometry turbocharger. That's also kind of a mission on these trucks too. I mean, we don't talk about that enough, but the VGT is something else. Would you like to see 
the turbochargers change in the future as well? I mean, I don't think that would happen. And I'm not too concerned about VGTs because they have their benefits as well. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I might have Josh do a video like this because I like to hear from him too. And I'm sure you guys would like to hear from a Master Tech's point of view too. So be sure to check out his channel, Truck Stuff, and we'll see you guys soon.